Special thanks to Reddit user SapphireLion15 for granting me permission to use their story. And with that, my lovely listeners, I bid you all a good night. I'll admit that I have my doubts about this subreddit. I've never believed that any of this supernatural stuff is real. However, I have experienced a few events recently that, well, that I can't readily explain. You see, I've heard my neighbors say for years that my house is haunted. And after last night, I... I really need some advice. My neighbors used to be friendly, sensible people. For a long time I lived in this neighborhood. Nearly everyone knew me in some way. I had been a third grade teacher at the local school for 25 years, had volunteered for every community event I could, and let the local kids play in my front yard. I never tried to stir up drama or make anyone upset. Things started changing about 12 years ago. I had been walking up the steps to my house one night when I slipped and fell. I must have blacked out, but thankfully I woke up a short while later. I have to say that I was lucky. Other than a bruise or two, I was fine. I hadn't been able to sleep so I read in my living room. I must have really enjoyed my book, the next thing I knew the sun was coming up. I was walking downstairs to make breakfast when I smelled something awful. A quick investigation revealed that the smell was coming from the front porch. Some poor animal must have died under the porch. I did not want to deal with it. I called the exterminators. I went into the kitchen to make tea and calm my nerves before I remembered that I'd run out the day before. Oh well, I thought. It's only a short walk to the store. I grabbed my purse, left through the back door, and made my way over. I hoped that the exterminators wouldn't need me. I got my tea at the store fairly easily. The cashier had seemed distracted so I simply left some cash on the counter as I left. The strange things began happening when I got home. The exterminator's van was in the driveway, which I'd expected, and the police car was parked on the curb, which I hadn't expected. The officer, a young man I recognized as my neighbor's son, was writing down what a man in an exterminator's jumpsuit was saying. I'll admit that I was surprised. Had there been a break-in nearby? I tried to ask the officer, but he must have been too absorbed in his work to hear me. I thought about asking the exterminator what had happened, but he seemed out of sorts. I decided that it would be better not to ask him. I left the officer to his work and went into my house. At least the smell of the dead animal was gone. For the next few weeks, there were terrible thunderstorms. The power went out the first night and never came back on. I tried calling the power companies, but the phone had gone out too. I remember slamming the receiver back into its cradle, and deciding that I should write to my brother to help me get a cell phone the next time he came to visit. Then when I noticed that the mailman had stopped coming, My letter to my brother sat in the box for nearly a week before I realized that no one was coming for it. I had meant to take the letter to the post office and mail it there, but, as funny as it sounds, I suddenly didn't want to leave my house. I don't know why. I still don't. Maybe it was anxiety over seeing the policeman when I came back from the store. Regardless, I've stayed in my house for the past 12 years, I think. I'll be honest, I don't keep track of days very well. I have plenty to do. I keep my house spotless, take care of my flower garden. At least, I do what I can. For some reason, I can't keep anything alive anymore. And read from the literal hundreds of books I keep in the basement. I'm writing this now because, well, last night, something unusual happened. I had been upstairs reading. 
It had been incredibly late, but I heard voices in my front yard. Young voices. I smiled. I hadn't had children in my yard in what felt like decades. I looked out my window. There were five children. Wait, were they children? Upon closer inspection, they looked more like teenagers. One of them, who had long hair, dyed bright orange, was approaching my house. I remembered the policeman. Were these teenagers here to steal from me? I raced downstairs. I practically flew. I heard my doorknob turning and silently yelled at myself, why didn't I lock the door? I hid in the hall, silently watching him. He looked around, unaware that I was watching him. He was tapping on a black rectangle, which lit up when he pressed a button on it. Despite all that was happening, I remember feeling surprised. Were flashlights square now? I kept watching him as he eyed my record player. While it didn't work without power, I had kept it as clean as I could. He moved toward it, a greedy look in his eyes. I felt anger burning in my chest. That record player had been my retirement gift when I'd left school in 1959. I couldn't let him have it. I ran forward, yelling at the top of my lungs, get out. He turned paler than I thought possible and screamed. He darted out the front door, dropping the rectangle. I watched out the window as he ran back to his friends. They were laughing at him as he panicked, repeating that there had been something in there with him. I didn't want him back in my house. I didn't want any of them near my house. I stood in the front doorway and screamed, Go away, all of you. Don't come back. They all stood in silence before the boy with the dyed orange hair screamed again. His friends joined him and they all ran back down the street. I've been studying this rectangle for a while. The first thing that appeared when I touched it was this website. I read a few stories and I realized that some of you might know what's going on. Please, tell me. Is my house haunted?